Before we get into today's t-shirt design tutorial episode two, I wanted to show you guys the new shirts that I just got in. It says designer on it. You can buy these on my YouTube channel directly. All you have to do is go below this video and you will see my merch. You can click on it and buy one if you would like. I wanted to create merch that I love and I love something as simple as this because it just shows how proud I am of being a designer and I love showing it off around town. So again, if you guys wanna pick one up, go to the bottom of this video where the description is. It should be in between the video and the description and you guys will see the merch. You can click on it and buy one in your size. Definitely recommend it. They're not going to last that long, so um, definitely pick one up while you can. I'm gonna show you how to make a t-shirt design in Photoshop. A lot of you guys have been wanting to, um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? A lot of you guys have been wanting me to design in Photoshop. So here we are, open up Photoshop and let's begin. A good design always starts with a good canvas, a good document setup. You have to set it up correctly because what happens is when you go to print your art, it's not going to look right. It's gonna look really pixelated. It's gonna look low quality and your print shop's gonna be like, what are you doing, dude? I thought you were a designer. You don't wanna be that person, okay? Don't, let's just say John Doe, okay? You don't wanna be John Doe, but you guys don't have to be that person because guess what? I'm gonna show you how to make a proper document setup right now. So go ahead and hit that really big create new button. It's really not that big actually, but go ahead and hit it anyway. And what we're going to do is we wanna to go to pixels on the right hand side. We wanna switch that to inches I like working with inches, pixels confuses me. So we're gonna go to inches, it really doesn't confuse me, just for the record. But So we wanna go to inches and we wanna uh, change it to 14 inches by 18 inches. Now this is a fairly large document for a t-shirt design, but that is okay. The reason why I say that is because it's better to work with a larger design and shrink it later than to enlarge it. Because what happens when we enlarge a design is it just ends up looking pixelated. You never want to enlarge something. You wanna uh, downscale it versus upscaling it because you're gonna actually get a sharper image that way when you're downscaling. So hopefully that made sense. It didn't make sense in my head, so hopefully it made sense in your head. We're gonna go to resolution now, and we wanna make sure this is at 300 resolution. And the reason why we changed the resolution is because the same thing um, with the inches. We wanna make sure we're working with a larger document, a higher quality resolution document. And in order to do that, we just changed 72 resolution to 300 resolution. That's going to achieve that high quality look. The only other thing I change is background contents. I wanna change this white color to the color of my garment. So whatever that is, it could be a red garment, a black garment, a, whatever color it is, you change it right here. So I'm actually going to go for a basic black garment, okay, because black sells, right? Advanced options, you can keep the same. And then let's hit that big blue create button. Again, it's not that big. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit that create button and that is going to start our new document up. Now we're ready to start designing. We're gonna go to Google and I just typed in eagle already. So again, that's the only thing that I have in my mind is an eagle because I think eagles are cool. So we're gonna go ahead and this guy's, that's sad. <laughs> this guy didn't make it. Sorry, RIP. Um, this one right here looks really cool. So we're gonna click on this guy. We're just gonna copy that image over and I'm gonna go to Photoshop now and I'm gonna do Command V. We're just pasting it. If you don't know your shortcuts, learn them with your system, okay? Don't blame it on me that you don't know. But some people in the comment sections just say, hey, you didn't tell us the shortcut. Well, learn them. But if you don't know them, it's okay. You can always go to edit and do all of them right there. So you can go to edit, paste, does the same thing. As long as the image has some quality to it, it's okay if you upscale an image. It just depends on the image, okay? I do wanna rotate it a little bit like this. So we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna make it a little bigger. Now, I got really lucky with this image because it has a solid background color. Most of the time you have trees and a background noise, so you have to use a different method to um, select the eagle and cut him out of the background. Um, what you would do in that case is use select and mask. We don't have to do that for this case. So we're just gonna select the background and just delete it, just like that. Now we have a solid bird that did a fairly good job of selecting it. So I'm just going through the eagle now and selecting the parts that didn't get deleted. I wanna go to my type tool and use white as a color and just type out made first. And I think I wanna use a font that's a lot thicker, obviously. So we're gonna actually go to this one by uh, Draplin Design Co. I think this one will fit this design really nicely.
I'm scratching that idea, did not like it at all. Not even a little bit. It just, nothing was working for me on that one. So moving on, we're gonna try another idea out. This is kind of cool. Let's go ahead and take this guy right here and let's try to make something out of him. I think I'm overthinking it and that happens a lot when you're um, tired and you're just overthinking things. So I'm just gonna take my magic wand and then make sure I'm selecting everything that's blue and delete that out. And then I just wanna select him and cut him out of the background and repaste him. So all that stuff on the left and right is gone. And if we wanted to, we can add an inner stroke that's black to get rid of all the blue. But again, I'm making a black and white anyway, not too concerned about that right now. And then um, from here, then we can kind of add text and figure out where things need to be. We're just gonna type out made in the, and just make it really big. Put that in front real quick and just figure out where we want things to sit. USA can be pretty big. Um, what I wanna do right now is think about the space that I have. So I do like how the text is kind of incorporated within the bird, right? That looks cool to me. So I wanna experiment with that a little bit more. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate him, but before I duplicate him, I wanna go ahead and make him black and white. So I'm just gonna to go to adjustments and desaturate. So now we have a duplicate copy of him. And then from here, I can lower the opacity and now I can figure out where I want things to sit. Now what I wanna do is add a layer mask to the duplicate copy. So I added a layer mask to the eagle and I wanna start deleting certain parts of the eagle to make him pop out of certain areas, if that makes sense. What I wanna do actually is delete the wing off the S because I don't want that S to be too hidden. But I do wanna keep the face, does that make sense? So I'm gonna get really close to him, just like this, and only delete parts of the wing and not the face. We're gonna keep that. And it's okay to keep a little bit of the shadow, but you don't wanna keep too much of it or else it looks super fake. Um, I think I deleted a little too much out of that. So we're gonna add that back. And we can raise the opacity to see where we're at with it, right? So now let's zoom out and see what that looks like. That already looks pretty cool. I dig that a lot actually. So. Um, see where we're going with this? Now we're kind of making something out of this. I also want that U to be kind of going in between his wing. Uh, we could do that a couple of different ways. Um, the way I want to do it is duplicate the text once and just put it on top. And we're going to add a layer mask to that as well and just delete everything else that we don't want. Again, same process guys, same exact process. And we need to make sure black is selected or it won't work. Just like this. See? Really simple. So delete everything else we don't want. We can add a shadow later on. We just need to get really close to that A and delete the top part that's kind of peeking out. Now you can argue that the A needs to show a lot more in this design, but I think it's okay if it's not showing completely. That's just my opinion. Um, but you can do it any way you wanna do it. It's up to you. Nothing says the United States more than a bald eagle, right? What I wanna do now is add some shadows to make this design pop even more. So I'm gonna add a layer above USA text and then I wanna to go to my brushes. I wanna make sure I'm on a soft brush. We wanna make sure our flow and opacity is at 100% um, and then we're good to go, but we do wanna change the mode to dissolve and you're gonna see why in a second. What this is going to do is it's going to add some texture, or sorry, noise to our shadows. And we can change the opacity later on, so that's why I'm not too worried about it. And now we can kinda of go back to that eagle and figure out what needs to be changed, right? Because we can see where our imperfections are. I'm taking it off dissolve just for this so I can add back some of the detail of that eagle. That's all we're doing here. And then we're gonna go back to that dissolve brush again and add some more of the shadows where the wings are, right? We can do that to all the areas that we feel are necessary. This looks pretty cool so far. So what I wanna do now is go ahead and grab a couple other assets. So let's go ahead and grab an American flag and throw that on there and see what that looks like. So American flag. See what we could find here for a second. Way, way better. So now we have some balance, right? We have made in the USA, we have some balance going on here and I think that looks so much better. Not really, you know what I'm gonna do actually? I wanna make some sort of stamp look to make it look like something was stamped on the design. So in order to do that, what I wanna do is group everything we did so far, like that. And we're going to go ahead and drag out a circle. We're just gonna make a quick stamp. We could type out something like quality threads since 1991 or whatever you wanna put, you get the point. In the middle, we could type out USA again, so people get the point. So we're just kinda of reiterating that USA, right? And then maybe in the center there, we can add a little bit of a star or something. So I have a star right here, I'm just gonna throw that in the middle so it's not so empty, just like that. So now we have USA and then we can add two lines, one at the bottom, one at the top. So we're gonna add one line right here. We're just filling up some space, right? One line right here and one line right there. And now what we're gonna do is make the stamp red or something so it stands out, right? And we can even change the rotation. So I'm gonna create one more copy of that 
changes the rotation, something like this. Why? That American flag on the left-hand side is bugging me now. I don't know about you guys, but it's just bugging me so much. So I wanna duplicate it once and let's add some sort of warp to it. I just feel like it's so boring. I don't know. There's something really boring about it. So I'm gonna add a flag warp to it. Maybe this will help, maybe not. I have no idea. Well, that bend is way too intense. Just a little bit of a bend like that. That looks better. Okay, okay, it needed something. That's what it needed. It looks way better now. Okay, this looks much better. So now what I wanna do is group everything together and let's name this design one. So this is our first design and let's go to Google now. I'm going to the site called Lost and Taken to find some texture to add to the design. I want something nice and grungy, but maybe not too intense. Let's try this one out and see what happens. And this might not work. We're gonna have to try this a few times until we find the texture that we want. And I just wanna force this within that design. Go to adjustments, desaturate. We want a black and white texture. And let's go to screen. Or let's go to multiply maybe. And then I'm gonna go to the camera raw filter again. And we're just going to adjust certain settings and see what we can do to make this pop a little bit more. I don't like the way this one looks, so we're gonna go back and find a different texture. All right, so I found this other concrete texture. We're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna resize it, force it with inside of my design, go to image, adjustments, desaturate. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, multiply that now. Go to my camera raw filter again. And I wanna go ahead and bring out those highlights a lot. So let's see what this looks like real quick. That looks much better. Look at that, now it's all grungy, nice and grungy looking. And I think that looks so much better. Let's go ahead and do one more texture. I'll find a paper texture this time. Actually vintage paper will probably look cool. This one looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and copy that over and do the same thing. Go to filter, camera raw filter. And from here we can actually desaturate it. Bring up the clarity maybe a little bit. Raise those highlights up a lot. Lower those blacks. Really bring out that texture. Just like that. And then um, go ahead and multiply it. See, I think it is a little too um, dark. So I'm gonna go back to my camera raw filter and bring out those highlights a lot more. So we can change the exposure is what we can do. Or actually um, just change the whites. Raise the contrast, lower the darks a little bit, bring out those details. See what that looks like. Much, much better. And then from here, if we wanna add some color, we can add a gradient map to do that. Let's just go to some basic color real quick. And then add a clipping mask so that is forced within the design. And then see, we can add this really cool vintage look. This one took me on a roller coaster because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Um, there's definitely some things that need to be changed about this design. I just wanna note that before ending this video. Um, the edges of the wing have a white kind of haze around them, and that's just because the selection I made wasn't good enough. Um, but I also don't mind it because I feel like it adds to the vintage feel of the design, so I'm okay with it but um, you might not be okay with it. That's completely up to you. But nonetheless, this is how I make designs. This is the process I go through in my head and using the tools in Photoshop to come up with something that I'm happy with. So that is it for this video. Um, again, if you guys learned something, let me know in the comments section below. If you guys are looking to start a clothing brand and you're looking for some solid wholesale blanks, some of the best on the market, you wanna go to uh, bellacanvas.com. If you guys wanna make your brand stand out and have some of the highest quality prints, you guys definitely wanna check out Bella Canvas. Get a wholesale license and sign up with them today. And Bella Canvas recently introduced their retail section now, so you don't actually have to have a wholesale license to buy their blanks. If you guys love their styles like I do, you can wear them by uh, shopping their retail section. Really, really cool styles on there. You definitely have to check it out. Again, I linked everything in the description below. If you guys like this video a lot, you can watch my last one right here and you can subscribe. But that's it for me. Keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.